Yeah, it's a... Um, Another night in the Big Ten. It happens to bring in a, another really good basketball team, one that was uh, uh, picked the season to be the best team in the country. So, uh, looking back at, uh, at Maryland, uh, Maryland was really good uh, and, and played exceptionally well. Uh, I thought our pace of our offense was, was a big problem. Um, our cuts became slow. Uh, and it became a um, the movement became slow. It threw off our timing, and, and, and we didn't play with the rhythm that we uh, that we that we like to play with on that end. But uh, uh, it's hard to overcome one for thirteen start in the second half. I felt great about our defense. They shot thirty six percent second half, and uh, and yet. Uh, you know, we, 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 we just missed some shots. We got the ball where we wanted to open the half, and, and uh, uh, you know, we, we worked, worked here a couple days to, to try to get better with that. So, um, you know, Michigan State, obviously, everything starts with Cassius. Um, and, you know, he's, he's 1A, and 1B is Tillman. And, uh, you know, Tillman's a guy that uh, does so many things for them. He facilitates offense. He's a... He's a Elite passer, he's an elite screener. Uh, you know, step out, and make a three, and um, you know that everything starts with those two. Uh, we got hurt in the first game with those guys, six point game, and and it was transition, and it was uh, just getting lost in a couple of uh, a couple of matchups in transition. Uh, obviously, going two for twenty eight from the three uh, magnified that, but um, you know, overall, I was I was. Fairly pleased with what we did on the defensive end, uh, other than about a four-minute stretch where our where our, 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 our matchups in transition uh, got exploited. But uh, we'll um, you know it'll be a battle as every Big Ten game is, and, and uh, uh, we'll have to be very good. Brother number one in the conference and defense. What do they do so well that makes them that good? Well, their veterans are old. That's one. You know, there's other than Malik, there's a lot of uh, a, a tremendous amount of experience. Uh, you know, I think that they they do a great job of keeping everything in front of them. Uh, they're a deceptively good shot blocking team. I think they average five and a half or close to six block shots a game for a team that truly doesn't have a lot of size. Um, and uh, you know nothing's easy, you know, and that's that's when we're guarding. That's the same thing we do, and uh, uh, you know they uh, you know they, they make everything everything with a contested hand and everything in front of you and everything challenged at the rim with either a block shot or a, uh, a wall up, and and uh, that's what good defensive teams do is they don't make a ton of mistakes. They keep you off balance a little bit. They throw a lot of uh, some different ball screen coverages at you. Um, you know, they may step out in hard hedge one time, and the next time they go under and, and, uh, uh, and play soft. So, uh, you know, it, it's, a, it's a sign of a veteran team who's, who's very dialed in on that end. Trent talked about a key to guarding Cassius is defend, uh, how you defend the ball screen. Just how, how do you just defend a ball screen against Cassius when he can just hurt you in so many different ways yeah. in that action? Yeah, it's one against five. You know, it's it's you, when when you've got an elite elite point guard and uh, and and they just the randomness with which they play. It's not just always a set. Uh, it's the it's the the just hooping the, the the freelance out of it and the ball screens and then it's the handoff coming back and 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 you can have the two guys involved in the in the screening action, but if you don't have the other three dialed in, that's when he that's when he is is effective and. Uh, you know you've got to make uh, you know you got to make things tough for him. You got to be relentless with him. It's it's you're going to see 65 or 70 of them uh, throughout the course of a game, and and a majority of them you can't uh, you can't make a mistake. Uh, he's that good. Both teams at the top of the league. They've dropped three in a row. You t the last two expect a different level of hunger or desperation out of both sides. Probably, yeah. I, you know I think it's it's. It, it's there's nothing easy in this league, and and you know I, I keep saying it. It, it 
nothing surprises me when you can win four or five, six in a row, and 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 when you when you, you if you don't play great, you you can get beat. And uh, uh, this league is that balanced. That's why you're going to see 11, 12 teams in the tournament. Uh, but I, yeah, I think you'll see um, you know I think you'll see uh, you know a heavyweight uh, slugfest. What's maybe the balance you're looking for with three point shooting between uh, Iowa? You said it took maybe six or eight too many, and then Maryland, maybe guys passed some up in the second half. Where, where do you want them to land? Over? Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know if there's an exact number, Scott. I think it's more about the the the, the quality of how they're coming and, and 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 when they come. You know, I thought Trent passed up two or three that you know I, we need Trent to take, and and Trent's Trent's a guy that can rattle off a bunch in a row and, and um, it's the flow with which they come and, and the ones that come out of flow and, and, and out of rhythm um, you know when you're not you're not sharing it the right way or you're not moving hard enough those are the ones that become a little bit disturbing when you're in rhythm I, man, I'm the biggest fan of the, of the three and, and um, uh, we, took, we took too many of Kind of out of rhythm, out of out of sorts. Uh, and again, that was goes back to our pace. Our pace was just 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 off a little bit. Brad, Michigan State doesn't typically play zone. The last two teams have had some success. How do you balance the preparation for that in practice, or, or do you work on it for this game? Yeah, I mean, Tom hadn't played a trip all year. It doesn't mean they won't come in here and and uh, and and play any. And you know, our efficiency numbers. Ken Palm numbers against zone have been have been elite, and we got I'll be honest, we got really good shots. Um, you know the little uh, three quarter court press changed the momentum of the, of the game. You know, and, and we got caught in a bad spot once or twice, and and then we didn't attack it. We just we just got really passive. But uh, you know, yeah, we keep working on it and continue to work on it, and, and yet uh, knowing that uh, you know it's not something they played a lot of. Did you see the loss at East Lansing as a turning point for this the squad? And after you guys, it seemed that way just because after you guys real rattle off six or seven straight. Well, I, I you know I, I thought what we did there was we we guarded. It kept us in the game, um, and you know at that time we had we really were trying to make a change offensively. In terms of, of, of getting into some of our ball screen stuff a little more, and yet we uh, we weren't we weren't efficient. We we, we would become better at it. So you know, it's um, yeah, it was probably probably was a turning point, and, and I thought our kids fought and hung in there, and, and yet it was it wasn't uh, you know it was it wasn't a night where we played very well to be honest. Is there maybe? More emphasis to try and get Kofi established early uh, tomorrow yeah. night. Yes, to get him. <laughs> there's. I mean, we always have that, and that's what's. Uh, you know, you look at the first uh, the first game in uh, East Lansing. Uh, Georgie took two threes, and Devontae took a three in our first three possessions. And uh, you know, we've got to be have an understanding of where we're trying to go, what we're trying to do, uh, and uh, uh, you know. In, we always, everything we do, we try to get the ball as close as we can to the rim and play inside out. And, you know, we have a saying, you know, love the rim like the three. And uh, uh, when, when, you're, when you're shooting them quick with 16, 17 on the clock, that's not doing a very good job of emphasizing trying to get the ball when we need it. And we've got to be better at that tomorrow. The last two games, Georgie's had turnovers deep in the backcourt late in games. Anything you have to say to him about that and trying to fix that issue? Yeah, don't be casual. I mean, just, you know, the, the one at Iowa was Trent's wide open. Nobody was in 22 feet of him. And, and uh, you know, the other one was just an outlet. And that happens. And, you know, he's, he's got his whole career without those. And, and uh, you know, let's just stay focused and, you know, not be casual. Brad, you are one of uh, a few coaches in the league, like Tom Izzo, that has the fortune of their son playing on the team. Just wondering, you know, how that, how you guys bond around basketball and, and how you relish that, especially for Tyler in his last year. Well, we had a we had an interesting conversation on the road um, with with Roy Williams. Roy had had like four starting point guards, and 
Tom and I were in the gym together, and we decided that you know we would trade his son and my son. Uh, they would go to North Carolina and play immediately, and and uh, uh, Roy in turn was going to you know get us golf and a few other favors, and you know along the way. Uh, I you know it's really special. I told Tom's son when we were you know when, at, after the game at their place, I said you know cherish these moments. You know, because it's pretty special to be with your dad. Because I said I know he does, and, and I do every day. Uh, you know, it's it's pretty cool deal, man. It's pretty cool. Uh, you know, we watch everybody else's kids grow up, and and we go watch them play. And a lot of times, you know, Tom's been doing this a long time, so he's been able to manage manage time. Uh, I was an assistant coach for a lot of years and didn't get a manage time. Uh, I had somebody else manage it for me, so it didn't allow me. A, an option to, to to see my son a lot, and uh, so I think we both relish those opportunities and 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 know how cool it is every day to to uh, see our sons every day. Care that, coach. It had been a while since the State Farm Center had that kind of environment that it did Friday. They were into it early. They kind of fell out of it. But how much does a crowd play into the game? It's huge. It's why this league's the the best. We face that every night we go on the road. I mean, it, it's, you know, 19,000 in Maryland, and I mean, it was that way in Ann Arbor, it was that way in Madison, it was that way, I mean, it's not, so it's, it's, it, it's, it's important, you know, there's no doubt that, uh, uh, you know, the, the hometown crowd is, is, is a big part of everybody's success in this league, and, and it impacts the game, the energy, the emotion, and, and uh, you know, unfortunately, we didn't keep it going. Uh, but uh, it's 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 impactful. We're we're grateful for uh, uh, for them showing up, and they're a big part of what we do. After the loss in East Lansing, it's come out that there was a players only meeting. There was I would call it a players discussion. Um, having been a player yourself, what kind of impact can those have if the right guys are talking, the right guys are leading it? And I would assume you're okay with them having it. As long as they're the right guys, absolutely. You know, that's that's what this is all about. This is their team. We're, you know, we're uh, us coaches help guide them and mold them. But this is this is their team. These are their friends for life and the memories that they're going to create. So I'm a big fan of those. And and uh, uh, you know, it was a it was uh, probably needed at that time. And, and it's it's kudos to those guys for stepping up and, and handling that situation. I mentioned Michigan State's defense as a culture, and you talked about you, know, you guys are similar. Do they offer a, a roadmap? I mean, they've had a lot of success with that for a while. Do, can you point to what they've done to, to some of your guys to get that buy-in on defense or early, I guess, in your time here? Do it all the time. I mean, I, I think any elite team, you look at any elite team, and you're going to find a coach who is very demanding of his players, and they guard. And they guard. There's not a – I don't you, you, you can talk offense all you want, but you're going to find it. You're going to find a coach that his team's always guard. And there's a reason that, uh, you know, Michigan was as good as they were last year. I mean, he was in Michigan. They were the best defensive team in our league. Uh, defense, defense travels. Defense wins. And the culture that Tom has and the toughness with, with, with which they do things, I love. It's everything that I'm about. There's a reason Bob Huggins has. 800 wins or whatever he's got, you know, ungodly amount. They guard. Uh, so it's, you know, Bill Self's got 700 down, so they guard. And there's a toughness about with, with, with which they do things. And, and Tom's done it at an elite level for a long time. Thank you.